Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. My name is Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. Since the beginning of the week, there have been three explosions and leaks from the Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 gas pipelines. The most frequently repeated version of the events is a deliberate attack, says the Danish Prime Minister, while German newspapers are writing about it. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki mentions a strange coincidence, and Radosław Sikorski thanks Americans on Twitter. There was a gas leak in the Baltic Sea on Monday. The Swedish National Seismology Station has recorded two major underwater explosions in areas where Nord Stream has been found to be unsealed. The leaks are under investigation. Um, their initial reports indicating that uh, this may be the result of an attack or some kind of sabotage, but these are initial reports and we haven't confirmed that yet. The leak took place on the symbolic opening day of the Baltic pipe, which is to make Poland independent of Russian gas supplies. We are not in a position to reject the notion that this could be an element of Russian hybrid war. The situation met with a decisive reaction from European politicians. Spoke to Prime Minister of Denmark, Med Frederiksen, on the sabotage action of Nord Stream. Paramount to now investigate the incidents, get full clarity on events and why. Any deliberate disruption of active European energy infrastructure is unacceptable and will lead to the strongest possible response. The government takes what happened very seriously, not least in the light of the current security situation in our close neighborhood. There are many opinions according to which Russia is responsible for the sabotage and attack on its own gas pipelines. Of course, this is not the only scenario, although a timely coincidence. Let me remind you that the explosion took place on three threads located at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. Russia refuses the charges. It is all predictable enough and predictably stupid to make up such versions. Again, predictably stupid and absurd. According to the researchers, the first explosion was recorded on Sunday night after 2 a.m. and another one on Monday evening, around 7 p.m. At the moment, we definitely do not know much more. Everything else is speculation. It is guesswork. The Nord Stream 1 gas pipeline was damaged in the manner of unsealing with regard to both lines. So much for the Nord Stream 2, only as for the first thread. The latter, 27 billion cubic meters, is still operational. The Russian services have already turned things to their advantage. Soviet propaganda blames Poland, Ukraine and the U.S. for the damage to Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2. Meanwhile, the former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Radosław Sikorski, informed via social media, who in his opinion was guilty of damaging the gas pipelines. The failure of Nord Stream narrows Putin's room for maneuver. If he wants to resume gas supplies to Europe, he will have to talk to the countries controlling the Brotherhood and Yamal pipelines. This is with Ukraine and Poland. Well done. Done. Thank you, USA. It wasn't until this morning that I saw the tweet. This is too serious of a thing to talk about so radically. I'm not explaining it. I just don't take all the tweets seriously. Russia took this seriously, Senator. This tweet is used by Russia today, and it is very dangerous. This Twitter entry by Mr. Sikorsky is scandalous and dangerous for Poland, as well as Europe. With the heating season upon us, Germany's demand for gas is growing. Salty seawater pouring into the pipelines is corroding them, and consequently making them completely unable to pump gas, which in turn means that if Nord Stream 1 and 2 are not repaired without delay, they may already be permanently out of service. Service. With that said, an immediate repair would require the lifting of technological sanctions on Russia. After a multi-week technical hiatus in the operation of Nord Stream 1, there is a danger that Berlin will be forced to lobby for the suspension of technological sanctions targeting Russia so that the necessary repairs can be made. Day 217 of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russia is planning to create a Crimean federal district, which is to be created as a result of pseudo referenda. Its territory will include the occupied Crimea and the Russian controlled parts of Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, and Kyrgyzstan oblasts. Meanwhile, Volodymyr Zelensky said that Ukraine would defend its citizens living under Russian occupation. 
On Monday, journalists from Radio Svoboda published excerpts from the Russian document titled Strategy of Preparations for the Referendum on Joining the Donetsk People's Republic to the Russian Federation. It included guidelines for holding a fraudulent referendum in the Donetsk People's Republic. Russia's recognition of these sham referendums as normal, the implementation of the so-called Crimean scenario and another attempt to enact Kyiv calls for the results of illegal referendums to be rejected by world leaders. Moreover, the Ukraine authorities emphasize that the West's help in the form of imposing further sanctions on Russia is needed as never before. As I understand it, we are to accept this model. Otherwise, nuclear weapons will be used? This is absurd and unacceptable. We will continue our counteroffensive and we are aware of the risks involved. The inhabitants of the occupied territories of Ukraine agree that the results of the plebiscite were falsified. Now that the referendum is over, the locals express their opinion more boldly. I will speak because I know I'm right. We Russians are the occupiers. Ukraine has not been part of Russia for a long time. <laughs> Russian President Vladimir Putin announced a partial mobilization last week. Recruits will support the soldiers currently fighting in Ukraine. The new units are stationed, among others, in the Crimea. For many conscripted into the army, it is the last moment to say goodbye to their relatives. Well, who will go if not us? If I have to go to the front, why not? If they all run away, who will go to fight? The losses of Russian troops in Ukraine amount to almost 60,000 soldiers. Although in Russia, over 80 percent of the society supports the war, the risk of death effectively discourages new recruits from the fighting at the front. Compulsory conscription intensifies the resistance of society. We are deeply disturbed by the large number of people who have been reportedly arrested in the Russian Federation for protesting after the authorities announced a partial mobilization of troops in the context of the armed conflict in Ukraine. Ukraine. As of the 26th of September, according to credible reports. Since the announcement of partial mobilization, 261,000 men have left Russia. However, according to experts, the Federal Security Service is deliberately lowering these figures. Due to the increased migration of Russian citizens, the Latvian authorities have introduced a state of emergency today to make it difficult for Russians to enter the country. Meanwhile, queues of Russian cars are accumulating at the borders of countries bordering Russia. It doesn't matter which military category you have. It doesn't matter if you qualify or not, or if you have a child that is one year old like me. Regardless of your education, they will all be drafted. Meanwhile, the European Commission today unveiled its eighth package of sanctions against Russia. The new restrictions include a ban on the import of more Russian products, worth more than 7 billion euros. In addition, the Kremlin will lose access to electronic components and chemicals used by the defense industry. So we propose sweeping new import bans on Russian products. This will keep Russian products out of the European market and deprive Russia of an additional 7 billion euros in revenues. Yesterday's nuclear warning of the deputy chairman of the Security Council of Russia, Dmitry Medvedev, is one of many issued by the Kremlin in recent weeks. However, NATO members do not succumb to Moscow threats and ensure that the use of nuclear weapons will elicit a response from the West. Our message uh, is that um, any use of nuclear weapons is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, it will totally change the nature of the conflict and Russia must know that the nuclear war According to experts, Russian tactics are largely based on verbal threats that do not translate into actions on the battlefield. Putin will claim that these occupied lands are lands belonging to Russia and will therefore claim the rights to defend them by all means possible. Already at the very beginning of the conflict, Vladimir Putin ordered the Russian nuclear deterrent forces to be put in a state of increased combat readiness. Due to the escalation of the conflict in recent days, the U.S. Embassy today called on its citizens to leave Russia immediately.
Protests that erupted last week after the death of a young woman detained by the morality police continue in many Iranian cities. At least 76 people have died at the hands of the security services, who brutally suppressed these attacks. Masi Aliyad, a U.S.-based Iranian journalist and women's rights activist, says this is a tipping point for the fight for freedom in Iran. Masa Amini, 22, from the northwestern Kurdish city of Sakez, was arrested on the 13th of September in Tehran for unsuitable attire by the morality police, who enforce the Islamic Republic's strict dress code. She died three days later in hospital after falling into a coma, sparking the first big show of opposition on Iran's streets since authorities crushed protests against a rise in gasoline prices in 2019. Police say she fell ill as she waited with other detained women. Mothers, they relate to Mahsa's story. They feel like it could have happened to their own daughters, you know. So for millions of Iranian people right now, the brutal death of Mahsa Amini is becoming a turning point. It's, uh, for this, but for the Islamic Republic, the murder of Mahsa Amini is becoming a tipping point because compulsory hijab is not just a small piece of cloth. It's like the Berlin Wall. And if Iranian women manage to tear this wall down, the Islamic Republic won't exist. Alina Jad started a social media campaign in 2014, encouraging women in Iran to share self-portraits without the Islamic veil, which she then shares on her Facebook page, My Stealthy Freedom. I just published a photo of myself, you know, running in a beautiful street full of blossom in London. I wrote a caption that any time when I run in a free country and I feel the wind in my hair, it just reminds me of the time when this hair was like a hostage in the hand of a regime. Immediately, I received a lot of comments from Iranian women envying at this kind of freedom, so basic right. And that's how my stealthy freedom born, because Iranian made our freedom like a stealthy. They stole our freedom. We were just taking up our hijab when police were not around. But Iranian women started to, um, you know, publicly talk about it. Amini's death has drawn widespread international condemnation, while Iran has blamed thugs linked to foreign enemies for the unrest. Tehran has accused the United States and some European countries of using the unrest to try to destabilize the Islamic Republic. This movement is the result of... Uh, like 40 years of women fighting back, pushing back the boundaries. Now it's gaining momentum. Um, I myself, I get goosebumps because I, when I launched the campaign against compulsory job, I never thought that this is going to happen while I'm alive. And now I see that, wow, women, like fearless. They know, some of them telling that, that uh, I don't know whether I'm going to come back to my family, to my uh, home or not. They know that they're going to face guns and bullets, but they say that freedom is not free. These women in Iran who are leading the movement alongside men, these are like the women of suffragists. These are like the Rosa Parks of Iran. They know the risk, but they care about freedom and dignity. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But for me, let's have a wonderful evening.